السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فمن مدينة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة المنورة أحييكم أيها الإخوة والأخوات في الله عز وجل في درس جديد من هذا الكتاب المبارك كتاب الإيمان من صحيح الإمام البخاري ونحن في الباب السابع والثلاثين من هذا الكتاب المبارك باب سؤال جبريل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الإيمان والإسلام والإحسان وعلم الساعة وبيان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم له ثم قال جاء جبريل عليه السلام يعلمكم دينكم قال البخاري رحمه الله فجعل ذلك كله دينا وما بين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لوفد عبد القيف من الإيمان وقوله تعالى ومن يبتغ غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل له هذا الباب الذي عنون له الإمام البخاري رحمه الله بهذا العنوان وهذه الترجمة الكبيرة التي ضمنها معتقده رحمه الله تعالى في أن الدين مركب من الإيمان والإحسان والإسلام وأن جبريل عليه السلام سأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن ذلك ليخرج به علم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيستفيد من ذلك الصحابة رضي الله عنهم لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال في الحديث هذا جبريل عليه السلام يعلمكم دينكم وفي رواية هذا جبريل جاء يعلم الناس دينهم والإمام البخاري رحمه الله كما مر معنا غير مرة لا يفرق بين مراتب الدين فلا فرق عنده بين الإسلام والإيمان وقد تكلمنا عن هذه القضية مرارا وبينا أن جمهور السلف رحمهم الله يرون أن هذه المراتب متداخلة وأنها إذا اجتمعت دل كل واحد منها على معان خاصة وإذا افترقت إذا اجتمعت دل كل واحد منها على معان خاصة كما هو الحال في هذا الحديث الذي بين أيدينا وإذا افترقت فذكر الإيمان وحده دخل فيه الإسلام كما هو الحال في حديث وفد عبد القيس الذي ذكره المصنف رحمه الله قال وما بين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لوفد عبد القيس من الإيمان لأن وفد عبد القيس سأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الإيمان فأخبرهم أن الإيمان أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة أو تؤدوا الخمس مما غنمتم ففسر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الإيمان بأعمال الإسلام وبهذا أخذ 
من لم يفرق بين الإيمان والإسلام من السلف رحمهم الله كما هو ظاهر صنيع البخاري رحمه الله رحمة واسعة نعم جزاه الله خيرا بكان by sending the salams and praising Allah Azza wa Jal and sending peace and blessings upon the messenger, his family, his companions and all those who follow his way. And the Shaykh welcomed us from the, the prophetic city of Medina. And he said, we welcome the brothers and the sisters for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal to a, another lesson from the book of of Iman from the great book of Sayyid al-Bukhari rahimahullah and we have reached the chapter where the author mentions where Angel Jibreel al-Salam asked the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about Iman, faith and Islam the, the Islam and Ihsan which is perfection of worship and about the knowledge of the final hour and how the Prophet ﷺ explained to him all this. Then, then, uh, then the Prophet ﷺ mentions that Jibreel ﷺ came to, to, to came to teach you your religion. Then the Sheikh mentioned that Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, rahimullah, mentions, and he uh, that the, he said, uh, Imam Bukhari said that uh, Imam Bukhari said that the Prophet ﷺ made all of this, all of these things, these three things, yeah, the, the Iman and the Islam and the Ihsan, all of them as deen, all of them were a part of the religion, regarded all of them as religion. And that the explanation of the Prophet ﷺ when he explained to the, the de delegation of, of Abdul Qais, the, the tribe of Abdul Qais, of what was Iman. And the, the chap, this is still the chapter heading where the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever desires a religion other than Islam it will never be accepted of him. So the Shaykh said that this uh, heading, this chapter heading which Imam Bukhari rahimullah brings and this explana long explanation that he brings includes the aqidah, the belief of Imam Bukhari rahimullah ta'ala and that he explains that the religion is made up of Islam and Iman, uh, Iman, Islam and Ihsan, and perfection of worship. And uh, how Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about this, so he could bring out the knowledge that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had of this, so therefore that the Sahaba could benefit from it, whereby the Sahaba could benefit from this knowledge. May Allah be pleased with them. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, this was Jibreel who came to teach you your religion. And in another narration, we find that this is Jibreel السلام, who has come to you to teach the people their religion. The Shaykh said that Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, does not differentiate between Iman, Islam and Ihsan. He does not differentiate between these three things. But the Shaykh says, as we have mentioned before, and we have discussed this before, that the majority of the of the scholars they view this that it is um, interlinked. These these three things are interlinked, and if they are gathered in one 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 statement, that is uh, iman, Islam, and ihsan. If they gathered in one statement, then they all to, uh, talk about their own special meanings. When they mention together, Islam. Uh, Iman, Islam and Ihsan they all have different specific meanings and if they are mentioned separately for example in other hadith you might just mention Islam or might just mention uh, Iman or might just mention Ihsan then they have include each other yeah? they include each other and we know this from the hadith of the, the, the delegation of uh, Abdul Qais uh, because they asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about iman, and the Prophet sallam explained to them that iman is testifying that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah, and that the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is, is his messenger, slave and his messenger, and to establish the five prayers and to give the zakat and so on. So here the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained, clarified that actions are a part of Islam. 
So the Shaykh says, with this mention of Imam Bukhari mentioning this thing, we find that the Salaf you know, had a di difference in regarding the dif uh, the, uh, if these three things were interlinked or w they mean one thing alone. Father Shaykh. ثم ذكر الإمام البخاري رحمه الله قول الله عز وجل ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهذه الآية حفظكم الله تدل على أمرين والآيات في معناها كثيرة جدا كقوله تعالى إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وقوله تعالى ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا وما جاء في معناها تدل على أمرين مهمين جدا الأمر الأول أن دين جميع الأنبياء عليهم السلام واحد وهو الإسلام وهو التوحيد الخالص وهو إفراد الله عز وجل بالعبادة فإن الرسل جميعا من لد النوح عليه السلام مرورا بأولي العزم من الرسل كإبراهيم وموسى وعيسى إلى خاتمهم صلى الله عليه وسلم نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوتهم واحدة دعوا إلى إفراد الله عز وجل بالعبادة كما قال ربنا عز وجل ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن يعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت فموسى عليه السلام وجميع أنبياء بني إسرائيل دعوا إلى إفراد الله عز وجل بالعبادة أن لا يعبد إلا الله وكذلك عيسى عليه السلام دعا إلى الإسلام الذي هو إفراد الله عز وجل بالعبادة وكذلك نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سار سيرتهم ومشى على طريقتهم واهتدى بهداهم واقتدى به دعا الناس إلى إفراد الله عز وجل بالعبادة فالإسلام الذي هو التوحيد الخالص هو غاية دعوة جميع الأنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام فدعوة الأنبياء واحدة وكذلك الأنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام اتفقوا على الأصول والأركان العظيمة لهذا الدين كالصلاة والزكاة والصيام والحج وعلى الدعوة إلى مكارم الأخلاق وبر الوالدين وصلة الأرحام وترك الفواحش كالشرك بالله والقتل والسحر والزنا والسرقة وشرب الخمر ونحو ذلك من الفواحش التي يبغضها الله عز وجل فالأنبياء عليهم السلام اتفقوا على هذه الأصول وإنما كان كان خلافهم في بعض تطبيقات الشريعة لأن الله عز وجل يزيد في أوامره ويثبت ما يشاء وينسخ ويخفف عن عباده ما يشاء سبحانه وتعالى وأخف الشرائع وأخف الشرائع النبوية وأيسرها هي شريعة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهي ناسخة لجميع الشرائع قبلها وهي أكمل الشرائع وهي أيسر الشرائع هذا هو الأمر الأول الذي نستفيده من قوله تعالى ومن يبتغ غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه الأمر الثاني أن شريعة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهي الإسلام 
هي الشريعة الوحيدة التي تسمى بهذا الاسم وأن شرائع الأنبياء عليهم السلام قد حرفت اسما ومعنى فلم يعد أحد يسمي, أحد يسمي شرائع الأنبياء إسلاما وإنما يسمونها يهودية يسمونها نصرانية أو نحو ذلك من الأسماء وإلا في الحقيقة فإن الاسم الصحيح لها هو الإسلام لكنهم حرفوا اسمها كما حرفوا شرائعها ولذلك لا يقبل الله عز وجل بعد بعثة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا هذا الدين الذي بقي اسمه كما سماه الله عز وجل الإسلام وبقيت شرائعه في كتاب الله الذي تكفل الله بحفظه إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون وكذلك في سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم التي حفظها الله عز وجل لأنها شارحة ومبينة للقرآن أما البخاري رحمه الله فإنه استدل بهذه الآية على أن شرائع الإسلام سواء سميت إيمان أم سميت إحسان أنها في الحقيقة إسلام لأن الله عز وجل لا يقبل غيرها والخلاف يعني في الحقيقة لفظي لأننا إذا ذكرنا المذهب التفصيلي وأنهما إذا اجتمع افترقا وإذا افترق اجتمع كما بينا زال الإشكال في العلاقة بين الإسلام والإيمان نعم Our Sheikh Muhammad, Zallahu Khairan, mentioned then the statement of Imam Bukhari, rahimullah, where he brings the verse of Allah, Zawajal, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever desires a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him. And whoever desires a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him. So the Sheikh said, this verse, may Allah preserve you, has two points, has two Two, two, two points and there are other verses with the similar meaning where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that indeed the religion with Allah جل, is Islam indeed the religion with Allah is Islam and, and another verse Allah جل, mentions I, have be, I am pleased with you today uh, Islam as your religion I am pleased for you, for you as Islam as your religion so the so Shaykh said that this, this uh, verse Whoever desires a religion other than Islam will never be accepted of him contains two major points, two important points. And the first is that this religion is the religion of all the prophets. This religion of Islam is the religion of all the prophets. And they all, uh, it's one religion and they all call towards that. And that is Islam. And that is uh, having sincere tawheed for Allah Azza wa Jal and it's singling out Allah Azza wa Jal for worship alone. This is the religion of the Prophets. For, starting from the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and the other messengers that came after him. May Allah, have, uh, may Allah be, uh, have mercy on all of them and be pleased with all of them. For, going from Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa, wal Musa alayhi salam and coming right down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and upon all of them that their da'wah was one, this one call that they invited to. And that was singling out Allah Azza wa Jal alone for worship. Calling the people to the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we know this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in another ayah that we have indeed sent in every nation, every people, a prophet who commands you to worship Allah and keep away from the evil ones that are worshipped, evil worship. And the, prophet, uh, the Sheikh said that we know that the Prophet Musa السلام, and his people and, and the, the, the prophets of Bani Israel, they all came to tell the people to worship Allah alone and make, uh, call the people to Tawheed and single out Allah, Allah Azzawajal alone for worship. Likewise, Isa السلام, came to call the people 
and he invited the people to single out Allah Azzawajal alone for worship and right down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came and he came to his people and he called his people and he gave da'wah to his people to make ifrad, uh, the, uh, single Allah Azzawajal out alone for worship and that was the religion of Islam and the religion of Islam is pure tawheed sincerely having tawheed that was the aim and the goal of the prophets that they called the people back and to the worship of Allah Azzawajal alone and their da'wah was one, their call was one the, the prophets all were united upon the, the foundations of the religion the first foundation being the tawheed of Allah Azzawajal purely and sincerely and that they were uh, united on the principles of the religion for example the prayer the giving of zakah and the fasting of Ramadan or fasting in the fasting and performing the pilgrimage they were all united in this as well as giving dawah to the good manners and behavior and to have respect and to do all the other good deeds that we're required to do and they were also united in warning against the evils for example the evil of shirk and the evil of uh, uh, illicit relations and uh, drinking uh, alcohol and these type of evil, all the different evil types of actions they were all united in this uh, and they were united in all that which would uh, cause, uh, cause Allah's anger the difference in the, the prophets was in that uh, is how they would implement their sharia how they implement their legis legislation as for the principles of the religion then they are all one and united in this and this is what Allah had planned out and written for the prophets that uh, they would be united on, on this and the shaykh goes on to mention that the simplest and the easiest of religions is the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that religion abrogates all the other religions before it it abrogates all the other religions before it and that's why we have this verse Imam Bukhari mentioning this verse whoever and whoever desires a religion other than Islam it will never be accept, accepted of, of from him or of him so the Shaykh Jazallahu Khairan goes on to mention the second point which is that the Sharia, the legislation of, of Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, which is Islam is the only religion which is mentioned with that name, which has been given that title, Islam even though we, have, we know that the prophets before they uh, had a religion but due to their followers changing that religion yeah, those religions will remain on their titles and they are not called Islam so even though the prophets came with uh, the, 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 the original religion because their people changed it and changed the, the, the title is changed as well for their religion so for example uh, the Jews changed their religion so the, uh, it, the, uh, the religion is called Judaism or Yehudiyah and the Christians in the same way that they, uh, the name that was given or is not given, is not, they're not entitled to have the, na the, the title of Islam on their religion, upon their religion. And we know that Allah Zawajal will not accept any other religion except the religion of Islam which is on the Tawheed of Allah Zawajal. And this is the religion that will remain because the Quran, the book of Allah Zawajal will remain. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, indeed we have revealed the remembrance to you and indeed we are the ones that will protect it and the Shaykh mentioned also that the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is something which is also protected it is a protected Sunnah, a protected way of uh, methodology or way of life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which uh, we implement the Shaykh said here Imam Bukhari rahimullah, brings these as evidence to suggest that or to show uh, that the sh uh, what is the, shari uh, the, the, the legislation Imam Bukhari brings this as evidence to show the legisla legislation 
As regards these titles like oh, these categories of Iman, Wal Islam and Al-Ihsan, the Shaykh said the difference amongst the Salaf regarding this is a difference of a, a linguistic difference because in meaning they are still all the, they have the same meaning. This audio file has been recorded and distributed by SalafiTapes.com. ذكر البخاري رحمه الله بسنده حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بارزا يوما للناس بارزا أي ظاهرا يعرفه كل من رآه وكان من عادة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يكون بين أصحابه فربما أتى الغريب فلا يعرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن من عادته صلى الله عليه وسلم التواضع ولذلك أراد الصحابة رضي الله عنهم أن يجعلوا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مكانا بارز ظاهرا حتى إذا جاء الغريب عرف أنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسأله عن حاجته وقد ذكر العلماء من هذا الحديث جواز أن يتميز العالم عن تلاميذه وأن يجلس في مكان مرتفع فإنه أدعى لقبول العلم عنه قال فأتاه رجل فقال ما الإيمان هكذا جاء هذا الحديث في صحيح البخاري من رواية أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه مباشرة سأله عن الإيمان قبل الإسلام أما الحديث من رواية ابن عمر رضي الله عنه عن أبيه عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه في صحيح مسلم فهي أشمل وأوفى من هذه الرواية وقد وصف الرجل بصفات منها أنه شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد أي أن ثيابه نظيفة وشعره نظيف كأنه من أهل البلد لم يكن مسافرا لأن المسافر في ذاك الزمان يكون أشعث أخضر وتكون ثيابه متفقة بسبب ركوب الإبل والمشي في الصحراء أما هذا فثيابه نظيفة وشعره أسود نظيف ولا يرى عليه أثر السفر ومع ذلك لا يعرفونه كما قال عمر رضي الله عنه قال حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسمد ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه كأنه يريد أن يسأله سؤالا شديدا وهذه الجلسة تدلنا على اهتمام هذا السائل وأنه يريد أن ينصت للعالم ولا يضيع حرفا مما يقوله العالم وفي ذلك بيان أهمية الإنصات بكلام العالم حتى لا تسمع بعض كلامه وتضيع البعض الآخر ثم سأله عن الإسلام أما هنا فقد سأله عن الإيمان قال فأتاه رجل وهذا الرجل هو ملك من الملائكة لأن هذا الحديث في آخره من رواية البخاري ومسلم قال هذا جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم دينكم والملائكة عليهم السلام خلق من خلق الله كما سيأتي إن شاء الله الكلام عنهم عندهم قدرة على التمثل والملائكة يتمثلون بصورة الرجال من بني آدم فقط هذا الذي دل عليه الدليل أن الملائكة عندهم قدرة على التمثل بصورة الرجال 
من بني ادم حتى اذا كم حتى اذا كلموا النساء كالملائكة الملائكة الذين كلموا مريم عليه السلام قال فتمثل لها بشرا سويا تمثل لها بصورة رجل قالت اني اعوذ بالرحمن منك ان كنت تقيا فقال ما الايمان يعني اخبرني عن الايمان لان في حديث عبد الله بن عمر قال لما سأله عن الاسلام قال صدقت قال الصحابة فعجبنا له يسأله ويصدق شيء عجيب ان السائل يصدق العالم العالم يقول جزاك الله خيرا ويذهب لكن هذا قال صدقت ما يدل على انه عنده علم قال فاخبرني عن الايمان اما هنا قال ما الايمان فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الايمان ان تؤمن بالله وملائكته وبلقائه ورسله وتؤمن بالبعث ثم قال اخبر قال ما الاسلام الايمان الله عز وجل ايها الاخوه بالله يقوم على بعث اركان ان تؤمن وجوده سبحانه وتعالى وقد دل على وجوده سبحانه وتعالى الفطره ودل على وجوده العقل السليم ودل على وجوده التدبر في هذا الكون ودل على وجوده سبحانه وتعالى الكتب المنزلة والرسل المرسلة كل هذا دل على وجوده سبحانه وتعالى والركن الثاني أن تؤمن بربوبيته وتفرده سبحانه وتعالى بالخلق والملك والتدبير والركن الثالث أن تؤمن بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العليا والركن الرابع أن تؤمن بألوهيته وهو استحقاقه للعبادة وحده لا شريك له هذه الأركان الأربعة لا يتم إيمان عبد بالله عز وجل حتى يؤمن بها أن الله عز وجل موجود وأنه سبحانه وتعالى الخالق المالك المدبر وأن له الأسماء الحسنى والصفات العليا وأنه المستحق للعبادة وحده لا شريك له ثم بعد هذا قال وملائكته أي أن تؤمن بملائكته ولعلنا نقف عند هذا الحد للترجمة ولأن هناك درس آخر بعد الساعة العاشرة ونكمل إن شاء الله في الدرس القادم عند الإيمان بالملائكة والله أعلى وأعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد Then our Sheikh Muhammad Hafizahullah mentions that Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah brings a chain of narration to him with a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And the hadith mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sitting one day with the people and Jibreel alayhi salam came to him. So here when he mentions was sitting in the company of some people the Sheikh mentions that he was sitting clearly, you know, openly that people could see him uh, everybody could see him where he was sitting and the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with his companions so perhaps the, he was sitting in this situation in this, this position because uh, uh, perhaps a, 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 a strange person will come and because we know that the Prophet ﷺ was, very, uh, was a very humble person, we, uh, 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 perhaps he would, people would come and they would not be able to differentiate between him and the companions. So the companions placed him in a, in a, in a location where everybody could see him. So they put him in, in, in this place. So a strange person came to him, uh, so that a strange person could come and ask for his need. Here, the Sheikh said that the scholars of Islam have mentioned the permissibility for a scholar to sit yani slightly higher than the people or sit in a place where uh, everybody can see him and this is permissible. 
So the Shaykh mentioned that this person that came, uh, he asked, what is Iman? He came, uh, uh, so the Hadith of Bukhari mentions that it was Jibreel alayhi salam came and he said, what is Iman? The Shaykh said, this is in the narration of Bukhari. On, uh, uh, mentioned in the narration of Bukhari from the narration of Abu Hurairah As for the narration which is mentioned on Ibn Umar from his father in Sahih Muslim, the Shaykh said that is more complete and more together uh, than this narration. Because this narration mentions that this person came and he was wearing uh, extremely white fold and his hair was extremely black. The Shaykh said this shows us and you could not see any effects of travel upon him. The Shaykh said this shows us that his clothing was very clean and his hair was combed and looked after. And that it seems as if that this person was someone from a, a local district or a local area. Because if a, if a person comes after traveling on a journey, you're riding on a camel, you'll find that his hair will be un, unkept and his clothes would have become dirty. And you would definitely see the signs of travel upon him. But here, there were no signs of any travel upon this person. So we find that in the narration of um, Muslim, we find that this person comes and he sits by uh, uh, putting his uh, knees next to the knees of the Prophet ﷺ and putting his hands on his thighs. The Shaykh said, this shows us that this person sat in a way that he uh, in a way that was of importance. You know, he sat in a way of, uh, of calm composure. So where he could ask the Prophet ﷺ because he did not want to lose any he want, didn't want to lose anything uh, that was said from the scholar. He didn't want to lose anything from him. Any, uh, any word that he mentioned. So he was as if he was trying to pay attention to what the Prophet, what the Prophet ﷺ said. Then he asked him about Islam. As regards our hadith here in Bukhari, he asked him about Iman. And that we know is Jibreel alayhi salam, because that's what it mentions here in this hadith. Uh, also because we know at the end of the hadith, which is in Sayyid Muslim, that it was Jibreel alayhi salam who came to teach you your religion. So the Shaykh said that just Jibreel alayhi salam was an angel. And the angels are from the, the creation of Allah azza wa jal. And they have the capability of taking the form of human beings taking the form of human males from the children of Adam. They take the form of males from the children of Adam. We know this from the situation or the, the circumstances of uh, Maryam alayhi salam when she was, uh, uh, at the person, ca the angel came in the form of a man and spoke to her. And she became worried and she sought refuge from him and things like this. So we know this, that you know, this, this can happen. So the narration mentions of uh, uh, the mention, narration mentions what is iman, and in the narration of Ibn Umar in Sahih Muslim, he, uh, he after the Prophet mentions what is iman, he says Ibn, um, Ibn Umar um, the uh, the angel Jibreel or this person says you have been truthful. So the people were surprised. This person comes and asks a question, and then. Uh, mentions that he is truthful in what he has said, this showed that the people knew that this person had some knowledge. As for here in our narration of Imam Bukhari, uh, of Abu Hurairah when he mentioned what is Iman, Prophet said, Iman is that you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and the angels and that you will uh, meet Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, that in his, in his messengers and that you believe in the resurrection. So the Shaykh goes on to explain what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said that Iman is uh, made up of that you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, that He exists, that Allah Azza wa Jal exists. We believe this and we know this from the natural disposition, the fitrah, we know this from the natural disposition and from the uh, the, the, the correct intellig intelligence, we, uh, intellect, we know the correct intellect, we know that we believe 
in the exist uh, that Allah Azawajal exists and we know this from reflecting upon the universe when we think and reflect upon the universe we find that we know that Allah Azawajal exists and, on, and from his books that he revealed and from his messengers that were sent so this is the first rukun or first pillar of having iman knowing about the, uh, that Allah Azawajal exists and the second one is that we believe and we have believe in the tawheed of that Allah is our Lord He is our creator He is the one who controls our affairs and all the other aspects of this aspect of tawheed uh, of uh, rububiyyah that Allah is our Lord and creator the king and the one who controls our affairs and everything so this is the second uh, rukun the second pillar of having iman and the third one is the Shaykh mentioned is believing in the tawheed of asma wa sifat the names and his characteristics Allah's, Allah's names and his characteristics having belief in that and then the fourth one he mentioned the Shaykh mentioned is having belief in the uluhiyyah uh, the ibadah of, the, of, of Allah Azawajal believing that Allah Azawajal is the one who is uh, has the right to be worshipped. That Allah Azawajal is the one who has the right to be worshipped. So the first one is knowing that Allah Azawajal exists, uh, believing in that, sorry, and believing in that Allah Azawajal is our Lord and our Creator and, uh, and He uh, controls our affairs, believing in, uh, in the asma, the names and the uh, attributes of Allah, uh, the characteristics of Allah Azawajal, and fourthly, having belief in that Allah Azawajal is the one who is has the right of worship alone. Now the Shaykh said that it, a, a person's Iman belief cannot be complete except with these four things. Yeah, that's the only time when a person's, a person's Iman can be complete when he believes and understands all these four things. Then the Shaykh began mentioning that the second point that the Prophet mentioned was having belief in the angels. And the Shaykh said perhaps we'll stop there because we have another lesson for 10 o'clock uh, Saudi time. So inshallah we will continue our lesson next time and he sent peace and blessings on the messenger and his companions and all those follow his way. So this Allah audio Allah file has been recorded Allah and distributed Allah. by salafitapes.com. For more information please contact us at info at salafitapes.com or visit us on our website www.salafitapes.com.